Another week, boys, and another TWAB. We've got a lot of stuff to go over today, especially some Q&A stuff. For those that are wondering how cross-play or cross-save is going to work, how the move from Battle.net is going to be to Steam this coming September, and of course, whether or not you'll have to repurchase expansions and other things. So before we get into what's happening next week, let's go in and hit this Q&A portion right now. First up, Forsaken and New Light. Will Destiny 2 New Light be its own separate? game file. No, all Destiny 2 players will be automatically converted to New Light and will maintain all of their prior purchases and entitlements. Question number two, what Forsaken and Forsaken Annual Pass contents will be included in New Light? Forsaken content available in Destiny 2 New Light includes free roam on all destinations, strike playlists, crucible playlists, gambit and gambit prime playlists, and select annual pass content. So very interesting there that they're going to be adding gambit prime to the free content as well, but be looking for all of these playlists to get exponentially bigger in terms of player population. Guys, I don't think you understand. With this portion of the game going free to play in September, Destiny is going to blow up. I can promise you. Question number three, what forsaken and forsaken annual pass content will not be included in new light? Forsaken content available only with purchases include the Forsaken campaign, year two raids in dungeons, and exotic quests. So these will not be included with new light. Now cross safe. Do players need to repurchase Destiny 2 on each cross safe platform separately? No, new light will be available for free on Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation. Cross safe will preserve all gear, character, and items across all platforms regardless of your entitlements. Expansion ownership though, Forsaken and Shadow Keep is tied to the platform store that it was purchased on. So players will need to purchase expansions on each platform that they wish to play that expansion content on. Next question, can players merge different characters, items, or triumphs from different accounts? This was one that I really wanted to know because I have a lot of stuff completed on my console account and it would be nice to be able to merge that with my PC account. The answer here though, guys, cross save does not feature account, character, or progress merging. Selecting a primary account for cross save does not delete or alter the data of any of the other accounts. So long story short, it's gonna be separate entities, guys. You cannot merge the two together. Unfortunate, but I figured that was probably gonna be the case. Next question, will Destiny 2 support cross-play matchmaking between different platforms? The answer to this, each platform will have its own matchmaking pool. So PlayStation will only be playing with PlayStation users, Xbox with Xbox, PC with PC. Next up, for Steam PC, which Destiny 2 purchases and entitlement transfers over from Battle.net to Steam? Bungie states here that the PC migration from Battle.net to Steam will include a one-time transfer of all ownership rights that a player already owns. So expansions, silver, accounts, seasons, etc. Can players pre-order Shadowkeep on Steam right now and migrate their Battle.net account later? Yes, players may purchase Destiny 2 Shadowkeep from Steam's product page now and migrate their accounts at a later date. Now this next question is actually about Stadia. Can players pre-order Google Stadia's Founder Edition right now and set up cross save for their accounts at a later date. Yes, players may purchase Stadia Founders Edition from Google's product page now and enable cross save on their account at a later date. Good little plug there. And as next question, will Stadia feature cross play with Steam or other platforms? This was an interesting answer. Bungie states here that Stadia will be its own ecosystem, just like current existing platforms. Stadia players will only be able to play with other Stadia players. So some really neat stuff there, guys. I'm sure this is not gonna be the last of this Q&A portion, but I hope this answers a lot of the questions that we had. It answered a lot of mine because I was really wondering how Stadia was gonna tie into PC and was there gonna be like PlayStation, Xbox crossplay happening or even console PC crossplay. But it's apparent here that Bungie wants to keep us all separated to our different platforms, which is not that big of a deal. Again, the player population is gonna blow up pretty much everywhere. Now, moving on to what is happening next week, guys. Our Iron Banner is returning, and this will be the first Iron Banner for Season of Opulence. Bungie states here, with a new season, you have a fresh set of weapons and armor available to earn. Saladin continues to offer Iron Banner bounties, but will also set you on a quest to earn your gear. In other words, prove your worth and be outfitted as an Iron Lord. So this season's Iron Banner armor will now be acquired through a quest. Each armor piece will be granted upon completing its associated quest step. Each armor piece will be granted as a powerful reward. 
and after unlocking an armor piece, it may be reacquired with random rolls through Iron Banner reputation packages and match rewards. If you're a veteran player who earned Iron Banner ornaments in the past, this season armor is compatible with all year one Iron Banner ornaments. Really cool stuff there. Iron Banner packages have been updated as well. Iron Banner armor may now roll with enhanced perks. That's a big one, guys, as enhanced perks have been pretty much locked to raid activities and other PvE related activities. But now being able to get enhanced perks from Iron Banner, this is going to make me grind it out for sure, because I've actually missed a few Iron Banners last season. I wasn't that excited about it, but the enhanced perks being added is good stuff on Bungie's part. Now, new weapons have also been added to Iron Banner packages and have a higher chance to drop on the first package you redeem. There will also be new Iron Banner shaders, emblems, sparrows that can be earned through objectives that must be completed during the season of opulence. Iron Banner bounties will continue to grant rewards and Iron Banner tokens. Iron Banner bounties no longer unlock direct purchase for Iron Banner gear as it now acquired directly through the Iron Banner quests. And these are the different armor sets that are coming with Iron Banner next season. The main thing to take away from this, guys, enhanced perks. That's going to be the whole reason why I think many of us are probably going to load up into Iron Banner. Now, as far as weapons go, I think a big one that's going to be returning to us that many of us are going to be excited about is Gnorus Axe. I think I'm saying that correctly. This is a precision frame shotgun, and it will have access to random rolls. And it's got a lot of good stuff, guys. Healthy range stat. Probably got some great mapping capabilities. It can also roll with something like opening shot and quick draw. One I'm very interested to see is actually Swashbuckler with his weapon. Getting that quick melee off on an enemy. Proc and Swashbuckler times five. I want to see how far we can actually stretch our kill range there with this precision frame shotgun. Should be pretty nasty, guys. The other Iron Banner weapon that's coming to us is Shining Sphere. This is a rocket launcher. Not really sure what I want on this thing. It's an adaptive frame rocket launcher, though. You can get it with something like Rangefinder and Tracking. For my PvE players, it also rolls with something like Impact Casing. But for PvP, I don't know, guys. I'm still riding that truth high. But this one may be all right. We'll just have to check it out and see. Now, last but not least... For those that have actually completed the raid in the first week, which was a total of 45,000 players, 475, you have the option to purchase one of Bungie's raid jackets. So for those that want that jacket, you have until 11.59 p.m. Pacific on June 18th to claim your Bungie reward code and place your order. So guys, that is your TWAB for this week. As of right now, no, the Menagerie Farm is not being patched yet. Even in the opulence known issues, they didn't stay anything about the menagerie farm hopefully bungie doesn't patch it like even through the menagerie farm right now i have not landed the god rolls that i want i've landed some pretty decent rolls but i can only imagine how long it would take if i was to do a menagerie run for each of those rolls so i'm hoping bungie just kind of overlooks this lets us kind of get away with it for the rest of the season we'll see though fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right